What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. This is Alex, MTV Alex, and today I got my mongoose black gum behind me because I'm actually at the same time I'm working on my on my uh, daughter's little bike and I need a brake lever because the one that she has is broken and I don't want to spend ten dollars whatever they are on the new one but since I had already ordered a bunch of uh, like three different sets of uh, brakes Two Citos, these are Citos from AliExpress. They were like $45 a piece. Um, I ordered enough to have on all the bikes, even though I already talked about getting rid of them. I already had them. And my plan was to put one set on this one right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and install these uh, hydraulic brakes on this Mongoose Blackcomb. And at the same time, I have had the rear shock for this one, it's an Exaform A5, and this one I think I paid like $50, I don't remember, it's been, I have had this for like 6 months and never got to it, so I might as well get them both out of the way. So I'm gonna, that's what I'm going to do, uh, and that way I can reuse that brake lever from this bike on my daughter's little bike. Let's go ahead and get started. But before we start, I would like to go ahead and invite you to subscribe if you haven't done so already. If you want to support the channel and help it grow, there's a link down in the description where you can buy me a cup of coffee. And if you haven't seen my other videos, make sure you check them out. There's some of them are really interesting. And other than that, let's get started. And yes, I know you can probably tell that I'm on a different scenery. I'm actually on my living room because my wife is using the apartment to do some painting. And like that's her stress relief. This is my stress relief right here. So it's a win-win. And let's go, let's go ahead and get into it. I think I just found the first kind of, of an issue. Since these are already pre-bled brakes, I can't pass them through here without it actually taking them apart. So I don't know if I'm gonna do that right now. I might just zip tie them and see how that goes and then deal with everything else later. So let me go ahead and kinda just rough it in. Now for the chuck. Now the chuck did come in with the uh, adapters, I guess. So we'll see. Let's go ahead and figure this out real quick. By the way, this is a Exa form RR1A5, and it has double chamber. It doesn't have any adjustments or anything like that. It is just a double chamber. And I think this one was 155 millimeters. It's not 165. It's 155 eye to eye. Now, as you can see, look at the difference right there. So I might need to do some adapting. Let me see what I can do real quick. I don't know if I can take this off and then just put them up on this one. Okay, they do seem to be coming out pretty easy. And that's my kids screaming upstairs. I'm well, not screaming, just playing, but yeah. Those comes out pretty easy. We'll see if I can use this again. Okay, so. Uh, spacers. <laughs> However, the original is, is this 
to have this one that I got last year when I had the Mongoose XR Pro because I had the same uh, project on it. So I have some extra ones and this is what I'm going to be using. Lucky me, huh? So I got the brakes, the rear brake routed kind of with tip ties over here in the chain, not the chain stick, but the link on the back. Zip ties over here, kind of ghetto, but eh, I don't want to mess with bleeding these things right now. And then this is mucked up and everything. Uh, the spacers worked out like a charm, so I'm going to see how much air does that thing has and then put more air as I need it because it doesn't have a rubber band or anything to set the sag so I'm just gonna inflate it and put in the same pressure on top and bottom and let's see right now the bottom chamber has 93.5 psi and the top chamber has Same thing. So that's good. Well, that definitely feels way better than before. A whole lot better than that. Pogo stick. But I'm gonna leave it like around, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to do 110 PSI on top and bottom and see how that feels. It does have a rubber band for the sag but it is the same color as the shock, so that is convenient. And right now, let me see. Let me see how much does this have. Let's see what the thing is at. I can probably see it being around 45%, so like I said, if I do about 110, All right, so I was able to go ahead and, and put in air on the top and the bottom chamber, positive and negative chamber, and I think I got it sagged exactly where I wanted it to be. Once I get on top of this, put my weight down, break, and get out of it. It doesn't have numbers, but you can kind of tell that it's about 30%. And that's exactly how I like my air shots. 30% sag. So this thing, all I gotta do now is take it to the trail. Well, before I take it to the trail, I gotta change the, put back the rear tire so I can actually take it to the trail and test it again. I'm gonna be testing the shocks, the chalk, and the brakes. I think this thing is gonna be like a beast. If you learned something today, make sure you give it a thumbs up button. If you like this video, also like the, this video. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, please go ahead and consider doing so. And if you want to help this channel grow, there's a link down in the description to buy me a cup of coffee. Other than that, that is it for this one, guys. And on the next video, I'm going to be working on my daughter's little 20-inch bike. So stay tuned for that one. I'm going to do kind of like um, regular maintenance and overhauling the whole thing, changing brake cables, brake housings, brake levers, and all that I'm actually going to be using. Uh, the brake levers from this one and put them over there. Maybe even the brake calipers and put them over there. This were working perfectly fine. Nothing wrong with this. She's gonna be fine. Other than that, that is it for this one, guys, and I'll see you on the trails. Goodbye.